In the grade 8 history textbook, only 13 pages out of 255 contained information on black Canadian history. The massive shortfall in our education system was discovered earlier this school year by the Ontario Black History Society. Their president, Natasha Henry, joins us live this morning to launch a month-long series where we'll take you through the many eras of Canadian black history. It's so good to have you here. Good morning, Natasha. How are you? Good morning. I'm great, Dina and Melanie. Thanks for having me. Natasha, I remember when this campaign was launched, and I think it was a few months ago, and I spoke to someone with a society, and we thought, okay, there are ears listening. There is going to be change. There's going to be progress. Has any progress been made in those textbooks with our curriculum? Well, not, well to date, no. Um, either these things will take some time. I will say that the Ministry of Education, they issued a statement, and essentially what it said was that there were opportunities in the curriculum for teachers to teach about black history, uh, reiterating what is already known, that there are optional topics in the curriculum that teachers can choose to teach. Uh, and so that is, is um, you know, the latest update that I have. And, uh, and so we continue to, um, to amplify this call for some concrete responses in regards to some actual change. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. get into it right now, Natasha. You'll be joining us weekly, which we're so grateful for. What will be your first lesson for us all today? So today I wanted to start off with looking at the beginnings of the 400-year presence of people of African descent here in Canada. And a few of the, uh, sharing a little bit of a few of those who were, who were here. Um, one of the first documented um, persons of African descent was Matthew da Costa, who was hired to be part of an expedition that was led by uh, French explorer Samuel de Champlain. And so he was uh, said to have arrived here in 1604, 1605, uh, to work as a, a translator between the European uh, explorers and the um, the Mi'kmaq who they were um, communicating with. And so his story demonstrates that there is really a, an early presence um, going back for quite some time of people of African descent here. Uh, going a little further, uh, the numbers of, of people of African descent increased primarily as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. And some of the following um, people who were documented here in Canada were those who were enslaved. Uh, one of the first documented persons was a young boy who was given the name Olivier Lejeune uh, in 1628, and that was in Quebec. And so um, this is an important aspect of Canadian history. Uh, it's not black history per se, it, but in understanding the experiences and the lives and honoring the humanity of those who were enslaved here um, helps to present a, a fuller picture uh, of the range of experiences that people of African descent had here. One of the remarkable stories um, of someone who was born into enslavement here is Canada, in Canada was a man by the name of John Baker, born in Quebec through the, the Loyalist um, refuge uh, trip to to um, to northern Canada to northern Canada, and he settled in Cornwall and he was enslaved for quite some time. Obtained his freedom, enlisted and served in the War of 1812, mm -hmm. and we learn about his story because we hear directly from him uh, through an interview. And on February 25th, I will share a lot more of his life in a presentation. But these are, you know, some important stories to document to better understand, as I said, um, this in this particular period of um, of Black life in Canada. And there's ongoing work, including my dissertation research, in order to help, um, you know, pay respects and honor the lives of those who were enslaved. Thank you for that, Natasha. And, and when you were naming these names, it's interesting because, you know, you look back to, and I want to bring it back to curriculum and what the youngsters learn across Canada varies between province. And these are not names that you, you know, will ring a bell for a lot of people. And they should. They should. And so how do we push forward here? I know you're going to be bringing us lessons every single week so that we become familiar with these names. We hear these stories. We learn these lessons. Why is it so very important for us to look back as we learn ahead? It's important because, again, I spoke of the 
the four centuries long um, presence and contributions of people of African descent here in Canada. It's important for all Canadians to gain a better sense and appreciation of, of that. As it relates to um, Black students uh, in the educational system, they have been speaking about this for decades, talking about um, feeling erased, um, being excluded, um, feelings of unbelonging, because they're cultures, their histories, their heritages of the African diaspora is not generally brought into the classroom. And for non-Black students, it helps to disrupt um, the development of ideas of anti-Blackness, um, you know, which we know leads us to society where we have a lot of issues to deal with and, and a lot of systemic barriers. So it really is beneficial for everyone in order to really um, disrupt the very Eurocentric uh, curriculum. And we'll do this all mm -hmm. over again next week with a brand new topic. Natasha, thank you again. For more information, head to blackhistorysociety.ca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you soon. See you next week. Right now, we're going to throw things over to Debo. He's going to get ready to get you moving in the morning. Mm.